in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed hallelujah before I start tonight, I'd like us to, in one minute, pray for the family and the ministry of Dr. Miles Munro and um, the Bahamas Faith Ministry International. Hallelujah. He passed on to glory together with his wife in a plane crash. Praise the Lord. And um, it's very sad because... Dr. Miles has been the pivot of the revelation of the kingdom life in my life and destiny. One book that I read, Discovering Your Purpose, Your Potentials. I read that book and I made a vow that I was going to affect my generation. And he's one man that I have come to love. He has mentored my life. He has changed my mindset. And... Um, Part of my goals for next year was to have a personal session with him. And so it broke my heart badly when I heard he had gone to be with the Lord. But one thing Dr. Miles said in his lifetime, he said the greatest tragedy on earth is not death, but a life without purpose. I can tell you that he died empty. He released his mindset in books and he set up institutions that will continue his ideologies. I was teaching the School of Ministry students yesterday and um, we're considering a course called Personal Transformation. And we're examining the concept of life and how that it is not so much about the amount of time you spend in your life as it is about the quality of the impact that you make first advancing the purposes of the kingdom and then being a blessing to humanity he consulted for governments one man who was able to create the balance between the secular realm and the spiritual realm he stood as a bridge and blessed both realms without compromise and one of the last messages that he preached before he died was how to die effectively he taught men how to die these are men who have cheated death. He encouraged everyone when he went to preach in Kenya. He challenged them to disappoint the grave. Because according to Dr. Miles, the richest place in the earth is not the gold mine in South Africa, nor the oil wells in Nigeria and Iraq, the Middle East, but graveyards where potentials have gone unused. Books that would have changed destinies anointings that would have liberated nations and miles before his death and all through his lifetime it became his conviction and he said disappoint the grave disappoint the grave and although it was a tragic event but he had already prepared to cheat death long the bible says so then teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom can we rise in one minute and pray for Cairo and Carissa, the two children he left behind, well-trained, well-schooled, and pray for the Bahamas Faith Ministries International. Go ahead and pray in one minute. Comfort them, O oh God. Indeed, the world has felt the exiting of a general, generals in the faith. These are men who that Hebrews 11 says the earth is not worthy of. They came with ideologies that conquered the system. They brought Babylon to its knees. They were prosperous from the earthly point of view. They were successful and yet they were relevant. Pivotal to the, 
the dispensational mandate of the spirit for our time. They cheated death. They reigned in life. These are men who even in the grave speak louder than those who are alive. Bless them. Lord, we thank you for giving the earth the gift of Dr. Miles and Ruth and Dr. Richard Pinder and all the membership of the Bahamas Faith Ministries International. We thank you because they took the banner of leadership and the revelation of the kingdom life to the nations. They fought the fight. They ran the race. They poured their lives like drink offerings. We are epistles and testaments and seals of their apostleships. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we pray that you comfort the ministry, comfort the membership. We pray the entire nation of Bahamas in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will bless them. All the sons and the daughters and men and women of God that he left behind, I pray that they will pick up that button and run. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that there will be no discouragement. And Lord, through his life, give us wisdom. That we who are alive will make the most of our life here on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate um, all those who made last week's service a great time. Uh, we traveled, but God was faithful. I hear the meeting was powerful. The messages were powerful. God bless you. And the Lord increase all of us together in the name of Jesus. God is taking us far. And as always, if we submit to the dealings of the spirit, the Bible says, surely there is an end. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want us to consider a very important subject. It's amazing to see that this is the 11th month of the year. And... Um, a lot has happened in our nation. A lot has happened in our lives. 2014 has truly been um, an amazing year for many. It's been a tragic year. And, um, but in all of these things, we thank God. And I want to just share with us something that I consider is very pivotal at this point of our lives. I want to share tonight on the power of hope. Very simple message, but it will bless you. The power of hope. Job chapter 6 verse 11. When we look around our world today and um, we see the complexities of, um, of living in today's world, ranging from terrorism to um, corruption and all kinds of insecurity, death, poverty, and all of these vices that have plagued our nation and our lives. And here in Nigeria, we've had our toll of the share of pain. Family members have lost loved ones, and a lot has happened in our lives. Many of us have um, had our expectations dashed at one point or the other. And it's important that we understand the concept of hope. And tonight, I know you will be blessed. When the Lord laid this in my heart, I knew that God was going to speak to us and transform our lives. Job chapter 6, verse 11. Now, when you study theologically the book of Job, um, there's a lot of controversy about the writer of the book of Job and the time the dispensation with which the book was written. Because uh, contextually, the book of Job seems to predate the law and all of that. We see activities in the book of Job that happened before the law was given. So we know that um, that must have existed in a dispensation that uh, most fitting would be in between the book of Genesis, somewhere around there. And theologians generally agree that the book of Job is somewhere there. The writer of the book of Job is unknown because of the character of that book. Uh, 
it is generally agreed that it would take someone who is either not of human origin or who has sustained an intelligence that is out of this world to have communicated and articulated the book of Job very, very um, accurately because the book of Job begins telling us about a man, a wealthy man who feared God and eschewed evil. And then the Bible tells us something strange. It gives us the picture of a meeting that was held in the realms of the heavens where Satan also came and uh, discussions were made about this man called Job. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, yes, I have considered him and all of that. But does he serve you just for nothing? You have blessed him. Everything he has touched has prospered. And he said, permit me to take all that you have given him and see if he will not curse you to your face. And whilst that is happening, Job was on the earth realm, not knowing that there was a deliberation that was going on. So it's a very interesting book because uh, it's one book that tries to answer the question of why bad things happen to good people. Have you heard that kind of question? <laughs> why do bad things happen to good people? Why do Christians die? Why, why do we have terrorists come into a church or a meeting and bomb it? Why? What is the contemplation? What is the answer? There are so many things that happen in our world that creates a lot of questions. No wonder we have people who were once Christians and then as a result of these unanswered questions, they become atheists or they turn and begin to mock God and do all kinds of things. So Job was that man. In one day, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that Job lost his sons, he lost his daughters, he lost his houses, he was into real estate, he was into agriculture, he lost his business, he lost everything. The only thing that Job had was himself, his health, and his wife. Within a span of a few hours, men kept coming to bring reports. I was standing and there were hailstones and this and that happened. All your children are dead. I'm the only one who is alive to come and testify. And while he was trying to manage the psychology that comes, the shock, another news comes. This and that was happening and your cattle and everything. And, and at the end of Job's life, uh, after that news, Job gave glory to God. And that was the end of it. And then, you would think that that would be the end of it. Another meeting was held again. And this time around, Satan comes and God is making boast with Job. And Satan says, well, a man can give anything but his health, his life. Permit me to touch his body and see what happens. And the Lord said, fine. Now, that in itself is a big subject of controversy. Why the Lord would permit the devil to go and buffet a man. Hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, Job began to have soil, uh, uh, boils all over his body. And within a short time, that great celebrity, that great man was reduced to ashes. He sat upon ashes and the Bible says dogs will come and lick his soul. He became a subject of embarrassment. Everybody in the city carried their opinion about him. And then the Bible tells us that three men came, really four. And they came and sat together. When they saw Job's predicament, they were shocked. And for seven days, they could not talk. After seven days, they began to analyze. They stretched their intellect from border to border. Searching what principles of life might have been violated to be responsible for this man's predicament. Are you following me now? And at the end of it, they said, Job, all we can find is that you are a sinner. And Job said, be careful. Don't bring a curse upon yourself. And there was a little boy who sat. Elihu said, I wanted to speak, but I was afraid because I was little. He said, this matter is not just the issue of experience. There is a spirit in man. We need the Holy Ghost to help us. To be able to analyze what would have been the situation. And after all of those conversations, Job's wife looked at him and said, Mr. Man, you know I've been there. We had all these children with you. I've been a faithful wife. Your situation is pathetic. I pity you. So here's the solution. My recommendation to this situation 
is that you curse God and die. And Job said, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? Hallelujah. And then a lot of things transpired. At a point, Job's humanity, this is the part that, that I want you to get. Job, because you see, Job was a human being. And remember, I did a teaching one time on the four living creatures. How that there are four faces of creatures in the throne. The first is the face of a lion. Hallelujah. And it depicts the believer as a king, as royalty, because we are a reflection of God. So that is the dimension of God that we must permit to be at work in our lives. Mighty king, you rule and you reign. And then the face of a calf. And it symbolizes the servanthood of God expressed in the person of Jesus. Which should be a template for our own lives. How that is not enough just to be a boss and a king, but we must also be servants. Hallelujah. And then the third face is the face of a man, which represents our humanity. And that means no matter how mighty we are, times will come in our lives when our humanities will speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible tells us that Jesus was hungry. And he went to the farm to go and get something. In fact, at a point he came to see a fig tree. And then he didn't find food. We see the humanity of Jesus. He wept at funerals. Uh, he was grieved when he saw men doing a lot of things. Perverting the temple. There was nothing embarrassing about his humanity. And at times in our lives, sometimes we tend to choke ourselves by refusing to allow our humanities to speak. Let me just stop by to say it's okay to cry. There are times that even great men cry. It's not a symbol of weakness. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so Job's humanity, he was trying to hold it. He said, no, nobody should, should accuse God. God is faithful. Though he slay me, I will praise him. God is faithful. Don't accuse him. But as the situation became prolonged, the Bible says hope deferred can make the heart weary. Job began to ask questions. Lord, I have defended you in the midst of my pain. Is this how you are going to allow me? I would have gotten married if I compromised. But Lord, I'm getting to 35. What is happening? Every time people wanted to speak against you, I defended you. Even when I did not understand why my situation was happening. When my elder brother died, I defended you. A few months later, my younger brother died. I still defended you. And now someone is sick in my family and may die. Where are you? Times can come in our lives. Listen to me. When our humanities will probe God and will demand explanations. The power of hope. Are you getting blessed? So Job was alone and he began to summon God. In fact, he was angry. And he said, Lord... I'm a righteous man, you know, paraphrasing. I have walked blameless before you. What is all this thing? Why is I demand you? At a point in time, his aggression began to get stronger. And he said, Lord, come down. I, I schedule a meeting with you. If you are faithful and you are just, if your mercies are new every morning, except I have been lied to all my life, please show up. I need answers. There are times when people have locked themselves not to pray for power, not to pray for grace, but to say, Lord, can you tell me why this happened? Why was my father sacked? I know that my father has never been part of those manipulating a lot of things. Why do I see ungodly people prospering? Yet for every time I serve you, I seem to pay a price for it. Hallelujah. And Job said this. Mm. He said, what is my strength? This was a communication of a man's frustration. The humanity of Job was speaking. The Bible says he feared God. That means it was not intentional. There are times, brothers and sisters, that life can push you. And you will make some statements sometimes that you will have to go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. You will make statements. Someone sent me a text. I think he lost his mom. And um, 
He sent me the text two days before that time. He said, please pray. Something is wrong. Pray. I think a guy or a lady. I don't know exactly who. And then one morning I was on my way to travel and then I got the text. He said, she's dead. He said, I will never trust God again. God is not to be trusted. Now you would easily say, no, don't say that. Sometimes the best way to help people is to keep quiet. If God is not angry at that statement, you should not be. The Bible says he knows that we are dust. Hmm. Hallelujah. And so Job was frustrated. And he spoke. He said, where is my strength that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? In other words, is it not better for me to die? What good is it now I'm alive? I can't do anything. I can't make money again. My reputation has been dashed to the ground. Everything I have lived for, I have spent my entire life for, is gone. And all I have is untold pain. I'm lying in the dust. And dogs, dogs who would not even come into my compound have now become my companions and they come to lick my sores. I have become a parable in my own city. And so Job was communicating his frustration. Something happened in chapter 14 of the same Job. Verse 7 and 9, please. Chapter 14, verse 7 and 9. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Chapter 14. Oh, hallelujah. I love the Bible. Job 14, verse 7. Okay, let me just stand here. Job 14. You can just turn so that save time. Hallelujah. Okay. I'd like us to read verse 7. Everyone. It was the same Job speaking. Hmm. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something powerful about, about, look at me. Do you know there is a technology that God has put in man? Every time, this is how it works. At first, we are always afraid. There are things we are afraid of. Are you getting my point? There is a way you interact with your fears such that you no longer fear again. So what would have made you cry yesterday, you will sit in the midst of it. And after challenging God and yelling at heaven, right at that point, a song of hope will arise. Sometimes the best way for God to bring us to a place of strength and victory is to expose us to our fears so that there is nothing else to fear. Hallelujah. Have you seen a man who has had accident and survived? When you shout and say an arm robber is coming, he will still be moving. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. While everybody is panicking, he just says, man, I've seen too much. If he's dead, I would have died. Are you getting my point? There are men who have cheated the devil with their testimonies. They've gone through too much. When the ministry started, there are certain things that would have to be careful about. But right now, ah, there are things you go through in life, you no longer get afraid. Remember when some of you were afraid of carryover? In the name of Jesus, I bind. It will never happen. And you went to the board. You saw it once. You saw it twice. The third time, you just said, Lord, you are faithful. Now you just come and check. What's the CGPA? 2.87. I give you all the glory. And you are comforting somebody who said he dropped from 3.5 to 3.4. And you are saying, may God bless you. Take it easy. You say, can you imagine? God, why did you do this? And you're watching. A time comes when you've gone through too much pain. Your pain suddenly becomes a weapon. It no longer becomes a thing of embarrassment. You look down and it becomes your weapon of victory. And Job in chapter 6 made a statement. He said, I'm dying. What is all this? Heaven was silent. He went through the pain 
after insulting God, I'm sure he told himself, I'm sorry, told his wife, I'm sorry, and said, look. And then he said this. Hallelujah. He said, for there is hope for a tree. Who is God speaking to tonight? There is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that's the part I like. It didn't say if it be rooted out. He said if it be cut down because the root is still there. The miracle is not in what you have lost. It's in what you have left. He said there is hope for a tree. God is speaking a powerful message to someone tonight. No matter what you have lost, God is the reason why you did not lose everything. Mm. You lost your first class status but you are still a student. You lost your family members, but you are still alive. They amputated one leg, but you are still breathing. He said there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that it will what? It will sprout again. Ha! The Bible says rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said for when I fall, when you are about to sit together and make a funeral, you will see me arise again. He said rejoice not over me. They that have laughed at my family, they that have looked at them and said at 31 nobody has gone to school. He said rejoice not, there is hope for a tree. That there are expectations that you have and now is November. The admission list came out and your name was not there. Yet in a dream, you kept seeing that you got the admission. He said there is hope for a tree. The tragedy is that the tree can be cut down, but not rooted out. He said, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Everybody say there is hope. What is hope? Let's define hope very quickly. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. That's what the Lord is doing in someone's life and someone's family tonight. You make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward one more time let's sing it as a prophecy for our lives and destinies come on now you make all Definition number one. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. First definition. Let's hurry up. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a thing to happen. In other words, is that feeling, that expectancy you have that there's something I expect to happen in my life. And so you keep that fire. You keep that expectation. It's called hope. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Number two. Hope is a firm assurance. A firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. I'll take it again. Hope is a firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. Powerful definition. The assurance, firm assurance. So in the first definition, we see that hope is expectation. The second definition, faith is firm assurance. The certainty that you know 
that it will not end like this. Although for now, things may be unclear. Although for now, things may be unknown. But you have an assurance. I don't know how it will happen. I don't know when it will happen. But I know it will happen. The firm assurance. Number three. I'll give you three definitions. Number three. Hope is an optimistic attitude. Optimistic attitude of mind. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation. Keep writing. It's an optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes. Based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life or the world at large. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life. Now there are some key words that I want us to look at. When you talk about hope, the first thing you talk about is expectation. Say expectation. So I expect that certain things will happen. I may not know how they will happen. I may not know when they will happen. I don't even know where they will happen. But I know that they will happen. Number two, firm assurance. That certainty. That I know, that I know, that I know. That although it's been seven years and we've not been able to have a child, we know that we are going to die as parents. I know against all odds, against all medical reports, that I know, that I know, that I know that I may be SS now, but one thing I know is that when I'll be going to be with the Lord, that genotype must change. I may not know which miracle service will bring the miracle, but I have a firm assurance. And then number three is an attitude of optimism. I keep my spirit high because I know that things will change. I may not see it. It may not look like it as at now. The job has not come. I've been a graduate for 10 years, no job. I've been a man of God for 20 years and there are just 20 members and I love God sincerely. The ministry is not growing. Finance is not coming. Influence is not increasing. Nothing is happening. Hallelujah. I'm a lady. I've kept myself and I love the Lord. I told God I wanted to marry at 23. I'm 33. It's 10 years of waiting. Nothing has happened. He it said, it's an attitude of optimism. Keeping your spirit high. Knowing you are not wasting your time. Very important. Why do we need hope? Very quickly. Why do we need hope? Why do we need to talk about the subject of hope? Why do we really need hope? Is it so important a subject to be talked about? Number one. I wrote here that in a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. In a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. So the first reason why we need hope is because it supplies for us the strength it gives us the staying power, the impetus to keep going, even when there is no human reason to keep moving. Hallelujah. Why should I keep serving the Lord when there are all kinds of things happening? Why should I keep hoping on God when believers seem to be dying around like chickens in our nation? Why should I keep being optimistic? 
when it's been years and decades, there's not been any graduate in our family. In a world that is full of uncertainties. Hallelujah. Uncertainties. For instance, the, the, doc, the, the death of Dr. Miles Munro raised a lot of questions around people. You know, because people knew how very confident he was about the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. One of our brothers in the technical department called me this evening to tell me he lost his brother. He just got a report that he lost his brother. Our sister in the media last week, Selena, lost her mom. And the mom was coming from the church. She finished service on her way to go home and a bike carried her. She had an accident, had sustained some internal injuries and um, by the next day, she gave up. And while she died, they were praying. I've seen a lot of people who minutes before people died, they were praying in tongues. In fact, some who died, died speaking in tongues or praying. Uncertainties. There are times when no matter how theologically sound you are, you will be faced with realities that you may not be able to answer people. Why is this happening? Hallelujah. Imagine that that celebrity called Jesus. Imagine a man who conquered death. Will you ever think that he would die? After bringing dead people back to life. You would think even if they wanted to kill him, it was based on that that Peter took a knife to cut Malchus' ear because he said, you don't know who you are trying. And Jesus now gave himself. And he said, Jesus, I don't understand. What is going on here? Somebody tell me I'm dreaming. What is Jesus doing? Wake up. Are you sleeping? You are handing yourself, donating yourself to be killed. And Jesus said exactly that. And Peter said, come on now. So you fooled us all this while. Where is the jazz you've been using? So you are not really mighty. Ah, I knew it. Something in my spirit told me there was more to this man. And he ran away. But he did not know that there is hope for a tree. The Bible likens men to trees. He said, he shall be like a tree. So he said, there is hope for a tree. Jesus died, but he died for only 72 hours. When men were busy discussing his death, he was already alive. Ay, 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 ay. Don't talk about my death when I'm already alive. We love talking about death. Two men in Emmaus were discussing the death, whereas the expiry time was only 72 hours. Did you know that this phase of your life that is full of stories is only a comma in the long span of the picture that is characterized by unending victory? It's been five years, but God has given you 80 years to prove to the devil he's alive. Hmm. There is hope for it. A time came, Peter was locked in prison. Now he understood. I'm sure in prison, Peter will be saying, yes, yeah, so this is what happened to Jesus. After doing great and mighty things, terrible things in righteousness, they, they watched the Holy Spirit come upon the church to begin a new dispensation. And now they locked him. James was in the prison. They said, don't worry, we know James. James is a powerful man. And later they just heard James has been beheaded. They said, you mean the knife entered? He died? They said, James is dead. All of a sudden there was panic. They said, my goodness, we thought the anointing was going to speak for James. Uncertainties. And now they caught Peter. I'm sure Peter concluded because the Bible does not record that when they came, they met him praying. He was sleeping. Peter said, well, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Whatever happens, I will go and meet Jesus Christ. But he did not know. See, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If it is not your time, you remain immortal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? An angel came. And the Bible says the chains just fell by themselves. And he let Peter out. Same thing with Paul. Paul was used to dying. He testified. He would die immediately. They leave his spirit to just enter his body and you get up and find somewhere and rest and the job continues. Strange man. They would take reports that he's dead and they'll hear that he's in another city. Paul. Very 
strange man. To an extent that some men vowed that they will not eat. Have you read that in your Bible? They say we won't eat until this man dies to our supervision. We must make sure he's dead. I don't know what they did with their lives. Because Paul lived very long. When he went to that island called Melita, Paul rested there. There was peace and tranquility for some time. In a world full of uncertainty, in a world full of failure, in a world full of darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. It gives us the energy to keep on moving. Still the same point. In life, in ministry, in business, in your marriage, in your academics. In other words, hope is the anchor that keeps us standing fast through the storms of life. Just like the anchor keeps the ship so that the waves will not take you too far. Hope is that anchor. Hope is that anchor that holds your life. When the boys terror storms of uncertainties in life come and buffet you like the house that is built upon the rock. Sometimes it may be shaken but hope will keep you alive. Number two. Why do we need hope? Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Without the revelation of hope, there cannot be faith. The Bible says, now faith is, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is, the what? The confident assurance of the things hoped for. So we must first hope for them. Speaking about Abraham, they say, who against all hope, believed in hope, against all hope, Romans chapter 4, against all hope, believed in hope. So hope is the pillar, one of the pillars upon which faith stands. And very quickly, I'm rushing so that we'll get to where I'm going to dwell for tonight. There are two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Number one is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. The blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 please. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. The blessed hope. It talks about hope that is beyond this earthly life. That's the first and the ultimate hope. Please listen to me tonight. Hope that is beyond this earthly life. Hope that is beyond the grave. The first dimension of hope that the Bible speaks to us about is what it calls the blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. It said looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. So the first hope that must keep us going in life, that must keep us optimistic in life, that must keep us assured in life, is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. That assurance that no matter what happens, even if this body is destroyed, there is a blessed hope. Are you getting what I'm saying? Confident assurance. That the grave is not the end of life. That in spite of all of the poverty and the terrorism and whatever it is, there is an assurance. The Bible calls it the blessed hope. And listen. Every other manifestation of hope you have in your life is useless until this is in place. Because this is hope beyond the earthly realm. Let me tell you something. There is life beyond this place. We were talking very passionately with the school of ministry students yesterday. And we were really considering the subject of life. We were actually examining 
the biblical view of success and fulfillment. And I was sharing with them a few things. If your hope does not transcend beyond this earthly realm, listen to me, then of all men, you are most miserable. The Bible says, I saw the grave give up the dead. Now, all this did not happen in the earth. Life was over for them. A time where those who had the blessed hope will rejoice. The sea gave up the dead. The grave gave up the dead. All of the people. And he said, I saw the dead stand before God. And he said, great and those who were great and small. I saw standing before God senators. And I saw carpenters. I saw vice chancellors and professors. And I saw villagers. I saw people who could not get food to eat. And I saw those who their dogs could eat the food of royalty. He said they all stood before God. And the moment of truth came. Books were open. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Books were open. And another book was open. He said every man was judged according to the writings of that book. And he said whosoever's name. Ah. I like the Bible. No bribery, no political party. Whosoever's name was not found, you will carry your flag, carry your, your, your senatorial district, carry whatever it is to the lake of fire. Carry your prestige and your accolades. Listen to me. When you stand from the realm of the spirit and you look at the earth realm, it looks like a vapor. That's how it looks like. Anyone who has had a, a true visionary encounter and you have been given the privilege to look at earth, you know how you look at the cloud. The earth is truly like a mirage compared to spiritual realities. Therefore, we must have that blessed hope that I know that as I'm going about my business, I know that as I'm doing whatever I'm doing, thank God for breakthrough, thank God for whatever, but I am assured that if I get out in the morning and for any reason under the sun I do not re return, don't doubt where I am. I've gone to a place of rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must convince yourself. Some of you are already afraid. There's no need being afraid of what must happen. Come to terms with it and win the war. Every time you begin, the greatest enemy of mankind as we know, they ask the wisest man, you know, societally speaking, he is considered to be the wisest man in the earth. They ask him what is the greatest problem of mankind. He said he's shocked that the government have not started talking about it. He said the fact that everybody will die. He said it's a very serious issue. We should forget about the issue of politics and oil and tackle this issue that men will die. You see that he's truly wise, right? He said, look at, we, we get up and we do the things that we do and there is one common denominator. Death. Millionaires have died in this country. Their money could not save them. Is that true? Men of God have died in this country. Habalists have died in this country. Children have died in this country. People have lost babies in the hospital. People have died 100 years plus. It makes no difference. Hear me. There is a blessed hope. There is a blessed hope. Everybody say blessed hope. This is the greatest consolation any man can have. Goodbye world. I'm staying no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I'm staying no longer with you. I've made up my mind. To go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. A day will come, let me tell you, every arrogant man in this earth must come to his knees. Oh yes, absolutely. There are men who live like they are gods of themselves. But my Bible says the earth is the Lord's. He said, once have I spoken 
and twice have we had all power does not belong to any political party it does not belong to any terrorist group there is a god that sits upon the circles of the earth he may look powerless now but a day will come he will show his might like the brightness of the sun and only those who have this blessed hope get five points without this blessed hope you are nothing are you hearing what i'm saying marry the finest woman in the world the most handsome and the wealthiest man in the world without this blessed hope you are nothing listen do charity have a big ministry be on air organize crusades if you wish if you do not have this blessed hope in five minutes when your life evaporates like a vapor you have wasted your life are you hearing what i'm saying we consider everything else in our life but we do not pay attention to this blessed hope many of us it is a shame that for many pastors this is not even a theme of our messages again i'm going to talk about other aspects and we're going to pray and speak over ourselves but first and foremost i owe a responsibility and i told god our primary assignment as a ministry we have four mandates from god number one is massive salvation of souls i rather leave somebody listen listen Look at what Jesus said to somebody who was lying down. He said, your sins be forgiven. And the people said, what are you saying? For many of us, that is inferior to miracles. Hallelujah. But he said, your sins be forgiven. In other words, what you need is a blessed hope. You need something higher than this. The thief on the cross, the other one said, you know, he began to harass Jesus and talk and he was unrepentant even on the cross. And the other one said, uh -uh, shut your mouth. We are getting a recompense for what we have done. We are armed robbers. They caught us. They are, they are hanging us on the cross because we stole. But this man is innocent and Jesus looked at him and said, this day, my goodness, my go all his life of misery became useful by one pronunciation to release him. Can you imagine that? Barabbas stood near the king of kings. The one who could give him blessed hope, yet he did not have it. Judas Iscariot was the treasurer of the custodian of this blessed hope, yet he did not receive it. He committed suicide and went to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He went and bought a field with the money and killed himself. blessed hope many times i think about my life and i'm telling you i live a very happy life one of the reasons why i don't worry in my life is because i know that every other thing on earth will only happen if i'm alive is that true the subject of cgpa is over when you go to be with the lord if the trumpet sounds now okay let me not talk about death since you're afraid of death the trumpet will still sound the Bible talks about his appearing. The trumpet sounds. Now, I guarantee you I'm out of this place. You just see this mic on the floor. You can come and carry it if you think that what we're saying is joke. Because there are people here who are hearing this and will just laugh. I remember writing a letter to some of my friends and classmates years ago, secondary school classmates, and one of my friends, he studied theater art. He said he saw my rapture entertainment paper. Rapture Entertainment Newsletter. He said he, he saw it, it got to him. I said, don't worry. It will be a newsletter indeed. By the time we check out of this place. Brothers and sisters, there is an event called Rapture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is not a prophetic event. It is a real event. It will happen. Where human beings will exit this earth, the greatest shock of humanity will happen then. So I live my life with eternity in view. Yes, I want to be blessed financially. Yes, I want ministry to expand. Yet, I want this and that to happen. But brothers and sisters, beyond that, that only becomes a worthy pursuit when you know that your eternal security is there. Let me tell you the truth. Satan's ultimate goal is not to make you poor. If that's all his goal, then he has insulted himself. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan's ultimate goal is not to put curses and spells and witches and wizards. No, that's not Satan's ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is to make sure that number one, he terminates the possibility of the blessed hope in your life. When he finds out that there is no room, you are already lost, then he will try to deal with you from the earth realm so you can fraternize with him to secure the fact that you will not make it. Hallelujah. Imagine the nightmare Satan lives with, knowing he has been doomed forever. There is no opportunity for salvation. So every morning I wake up, Satan is afraid. Because the more we advance the kingdom, the more his time of doom comes near. He said, have you come to destroy us before our time? There is a time that is their own. It's for them. It has been earmarked. It's not a secret. They know it. That a dispensation will come where death, hell, and the grave will be casted into the lake of fire. The Bible calls it the second death. That is when officially the meter of eternity will start reading. Satan is aware. Satan is aware. That's why the moment you declare the name of the Lord and you commit your life to bringing people into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have declared war on the gates of hell. There are people right here Listen, I will never make assumptions. There are people here, you are looking at me. You know right now that if the trumpet sounds, the sincere truth is that you do not have this blessed hope. There is no guessing it, brothers and sisters. Uh, I can't remember exactly when I got born again. I think, I just know that I love God. Look at me. Come. Come. Madam, are you married? Yes. When? Uh, Kai. When exactly was I married? I just know that somehow, somehow, this man used to stroll around and now we have many children. Are you married? And Sammy, are you married? People celebrate their wedding anniversaries with joy. True or false? We are 20 years in marriage and they smile. They say, for these 20 years, God has been faithful. Let me tell you something. There are many believers deceiving themselves. They do not have one, what the Bible calls the assurance of salvation. And number two, they are not taking it seriously. We think about money and every other thing aside from the blessed hope. But tonight, the Lord wants to make all things new. I'm going to take an altar call. I just feel I should stop here and let's take a powerful altar call right now to the shame of the devil. Hallelujah. Listen. There is no playing games, brothers and sisters. Whether you are poor or rich. Right now in the church, they say, don't threaten people. Don't teach about anything rapture. Just give them a good reason. <laughs> Whether you feel threatened or not, let me tell you the truth. It will happen. Jesus is coming soon. Everything that needs to happen for him to come has happened. The final sign, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom, is what we are doing right now. And at every moment, his majesty can come. If you are afraid of the coming of Jesus Christ, it's because you are going to hell. It should be a thing we should rejoice about. And say, Lord, finally, an end comes to this life of misery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everyone rise on your feet. We are going to take this altar call right now. Please, let this be a solemn moment. I am, I, am, I am dead serious with what is happening right now. Hallelujah. There are people here who are saying, man of God, I love the Lord. I have served the Lord. Some of you may even be preachers. But you are saying sincerely, I am not sure that that blessed hope there is a condition for it to happen. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not anything that you have to do on your part. You just receive the free gift of salvation. The Bible says, for all have sinned. All have sinned. There's nothing embarrassing about realizing that you probably have not receive the gift of salvation. 
He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. He gave his one and only begotten son. He said, whosoever, no selection, shall believe in him. Believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. There are people here. Some of you, you have been around church. You, you do a lot of spiritual things. And you have believed that that is a justification. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. And our hope and all our pains will be no more. We will stand and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. Oh, this is the destiny of the church. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. And our hope and all our fears will be no more and we will stand with the host of heaven and cry holy is the lamb we will worship and adore you evermore right now as we sing this song wherever you are inside and outside you need to come and surrender to jesus I like you to passionately like a man running away from fire find your way to the front right now find your way to the front right now find your way to the front right now the moment we raise this song I like you to come make business with him we will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem all our pain and all our fears will be no more don't sit back deceiving yourself we will stand with the hosts of heaven and cry holy is the land we will worship and adore you forevermore we will stand in the golden city New Jerusalem will be no more, and we will and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. For the last time now. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. We will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you. and adore you forevermore the saints will see him holy 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 he's the lamb that's what we will sing at his feet holy 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 he's the lamb oh when this life is over that's our song holy 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 they that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. Standing. Receiving all kinds of crowns of glory. Standing at His Majesty's Where He will tell us, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We'll sing holy. All our pain, 
and all our fears will be no more. I know this that I will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore. Listen, even if you live to 120 years, hear me? You're not going to die young. Don't be afraid. This is not a funeral service. We have a covenant of life and prosperity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, even if you live 200 years, one of the interesting things in the Bible is that they will mention a very long age of a man and then they will say, and he died. He still died. Some of you are standing and you are crying. I tell you the truth. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Tonight can be that night. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what you... There are some of us who need to rededicate our lives. I just sense that there are still one or two people that need to join them and say, for me, I'm rededicating it. I'm saying, Lord, I surrender everything. I've been stubborn towards the will and the purposes of God. You are part of that inside and outside. Join them quickly as I pray for you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a light that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so. Hallelujah. Those of us in front here, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to the lover of your soul talk to him he died for you the bible says while we were yet sinners as you pray i want you to think about your life in one minute and tell yourself it's over enough of playing games and for all of us who are standing don't think because you are standing it means you should not reflect please in one minute i'd like everybody to reflect on your life am i living my life in a way that if i see it being replayed I will be glad I live that way. Am I living my life in a way that if I am to watch myself in heaven, I will say, thank you, Jesus. I spent my life on the purposes of the kingdom. Lift your voice and pray. This is serious business tonight. This is why Jesus shed his blood. Please, don't you think we are playing games tonight? This is a very serious issue. If you're under the sound of my voice, you should be thinking about your life very deeply and seriously. No man will stand for you on that day. There is no advocate, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle. He said, books were opened. I saw the dead, both small and great. Let what you are hearing tonight not stand against you in the day of judgment. pray those of you in front pray jesus you died for me jesus you died for me i return to you now i return to you jesus son of god i believe in you I believe in you. That's what you should be saying, those of you kneeling down in front. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Just the voices, I like you to hush it from the depths of your heart. Say, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life everlasting whosoever believes in him hallelujah those of you in front i'd like you to say after me from the depth of your heart and never forget this day 
Some of you are rededicating yourself. Some of you are truly surrendering all. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender every aspect of my life completely to you. I make you Lord of my life. I have run away from you for too long. But tonight, like a prodigal child, I return home to you, the lover of my soul. I return to you. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me. Make me new. Give me a new beginning. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. That when this life is over, I will have that blessed hope. I declare today that I willingly, consciously make Jesus Lord of my life. I'm willing to live by your word in the name of Jesus. Father, what a privilege. What a privilege. I ask you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that the grace for a new beginning, give them in the name of Jesus. For many of them, they have been running like a deer that pants for the water. And tonight they have found salvation. I ask that this will be a genuine desire. That on that day when we all stand, we will see them. I bless you. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that your name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I declare that Jesus is Lord of your life. From tonight, grace to walk in righteousness. I cut you away from any lifestyle that is not consistent with the character of the kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A big congratulations to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please, I'd like you to follow the ushers in one minute. They'll just have your details and you return back to your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of us standing, before we continue, there's one more aspect that I must touch and then we'll pray. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Keep me. Go ahead and pray. Keep me. Keep me. Pray. Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Oh, yes. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling in the midst of the pressures and the challenges of life. Keep me. Keep me from falling. It says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. Keep me from falling, that I will serve you all my life. That I will serve you all my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Let's finish up. So there are two dimensions of hope. The first is the blessed hope. And according to Titus chapter 2 verse 13, the blessed hope talks about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that we'll be spending eternity with him in a place of absolute rest. I wrote a song maybe 10, 13 years ago. The coming of the Lord is near and I can hear the sound of the trumpet so loud when the dead in Christ shall rise again and we who are alive will be caught up in glory to a place of rest called heaven called paradise and there we will rejoice forevermore remember writing that song 
was my communication. I've taken God serious all my life. And I want to encourage us. Stay with God. Stay with God. A time will come where we will be in a place of absolute rest and peace and love forever. Where there will be no wars, no terrorism, no hunger, no issue of jam and wayek, no issue of corruption and death and sickness. And that is our blessed hope. Hallelujah. Absolutely. The second aspect of hope, we'll deal with that now. When your eternity is secured, you can deal with the quality of your life here on earth. And that's what we want to deal with very quickly. The fact that our ultimate hope is beyond this life. It's not a guarantee that we should allow the devil to buffet our lives here in the earth realm. The Bible says, having the promise of this life, uh, having the promise, uh, how did he put it now? going to get to that scripture first Timothy I, I think we'll get there we'll get there let me just skip it the second dimension of hope is what the Bible calls hope in this life hope in this life so our hope is not just in heaven alone we have hope even in this life hallelujah First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. First Timothy media, if you can help us. Everyone say hope in this life. Yes. If you are supposed to live 90 years old and you are 25 years now or 30 years, how many more years do you have? At least 60 or 65 years. You don't want it to be 65 years of hopelessness and misery. Hallelujah. So we must have hope even in this life. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. He said, but bodily exercise profited little. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable to all things. He said, having the promise and expectation of the life that now is, huh? and then that which is to come. So there is a promise of the quality of life that now is. Jesus speaking to the, to the disciples said, no man who has left father or mother or land houses for my sake and for the kingdoms. He said, but he will receive in this life, this and that and that, and then in the life to come, life everlasting. There are issues in our life today that we're discouraged about. And we must sustain the grace to deal with it. Praise the Lord. We need hope in this life. To be able to achieve our goals. To be able to push through the walls of limitations. To be able to overcome challenges. And obstacles. And to triumph over circumstances. I'll take it again. We need hope in this life. So that we can achieve our goals. We can push through the walls of limitations. We can overcome challenges and obstacles. And finally triumph over circumstances. These are the two dimensions of hope. One is the blessed hope. At the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the other is the hope we have that assures us of victory here and now praise the lord now very quickly what is the basis for hope what is the biblical basis for hope let's start with our blessed hope that means what is the foundation what is the assurance what is the condition what is the basis on which we have our hope the blessed hope. What gives us assurance that what we call blessed hope is not a lie? What gives us that assurance that we will partake of it? Number one is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ. 
the first basis for our blessed hope, hope beyond this life, is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that has given us access to eternal life and peace with God. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. So the basis for my spending eternity with God the basis for that hope that I have is the fact that Jesus died. The sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that today has granted me access to eternal life and peace with God through the blood of Jesus. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. Hallelujah. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that eternal life comes through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So based on the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ, it gives me a basis for having that blessed hope. That truly, on account of what Christ has done, I will be able to stand blameless before the throne. Hallelujah. Number two. What gives us the basis for the blessed hope is the words and the prophecies in the Bible which we consider to be true. Revelations 21 verse 1 to 5. Let's rush please. Two major reasons why we have assurance that this blessed hope is true. Number one is that Jesus died and he has given us access. Number two is that the concept of this blessed hope has been written in the Bible and we believe it to be true. I saw a new heaven, Revelation 21. This was the revelation that was given to John the Apostle in the Isle of Patmos. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So John tells us, based on the prophecy in the book, that there was truly a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Verse 2. And I, John, saw it. Are you seeing that now? John saw it. So he's not telling us what an angel told him. John saw it. So it gives us the basis of assurance. I saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. We're reading to 5. And God shall wipe away their tears. You see where we got the song that we're singing? He shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And God himself tells us in verse 5, he said, and he that sat on the throne, not a delegate, he said, behold, I make all things new. And he said, right, for these words are true and faithful. So we can believe it. God himself endorsed it, that the concept of this blessed hope against all scientific odds is true. Write it. He said, document it so that those who will read this prophecy will know that there is truly a blessed hope. Are you blessed? So the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ gives us the basis for our blessed hope. Hallelujah. And then the prophecies of the Bible given and endorsed by God himself further gives us an assurance. So that is the, the, the basis for our blessed hope. What is the basis for our hope in this life then? The second dimension. What gives us assurance that the cancer will die? What gives us assurance that you will build the house? What gives us assurance that in spite of all of the delays and the frustration in your life, you will emerge a champion? What gives you assurance that the ministry that looks small today would be of global impact. I call them the attributes of God. There are three attributes of God that gives us confidence and gives us hope in this life. The first attribute of God that gives us hope in this life 
is his creative ability. The first attribute of God that becomes the basis for our hope in this life is his creative ability. His ability to make something out of nothing gives us hope. So no matter how hopeless my life is, when I look at that attribute of God, that it is still within his power to make something with no raw material, I know that there is hope for me. So when God says he can change my story, I can believe in and, and hold on to that his attribute. I preached a message, uh, I think it was last year, faith in the faithfulness of God. You can have faith in the attributes of God. I can have faith in the creative ability of God. And the Bible is full of this. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 3, just write it, we may not project it. The Bible says, verse 2, the earth was dark and void and formless. That was a hopeless situation. But then we see the creative power of God. He said, and Elohim said, light be. All of a sudden, he began to recreate the earth out of nothing. If God can recreate the earth out of nothing, it means he can recreate my life no matter what is missing. So that revelation gives me hope to hold on to him. The attribute of God, his creative attributes. In John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, specifically from verse 9 to 12, the entire text of five loaves and two fish, we see the creative ability of God at work. 5,000 men aside women and children, they were hungry. And Andrew saw a young lad having five loaves and two fish. And they brought it to Jesus. And Jesus said, no problem. It's not a hopeless situation when I am there. It is within my power to create. The Bible says he lifted it and he gave thanks. All of a sudden, we saw creation at work again. Hallelujah. Everyone say, God has creative power. Because you see, for many of us, it is difficult to see how God will step in and change your situation. Because the raw material you know to produce that change has been lost. Are you getting my point? How can I have hope that I will give birth to a child when the womb that should to keep the child has been removed? Are you getting my point? Maybe because of fibroid or something, the womb was, it was removed. I saw it. I know it's gone. Can I still have hope? The creator. The creator. Hallelujah. He said, all I need is your cooperation. The creator. The one who can make... Nothing is still a raw material for him. Everyone say, God has creative ability. So there is hope for my life. I think it was here we had a testimony about someone who jam came out. Remember that jam? And there was 100 and something. Hallelujah. 100 and something. And I think after one of the miracle services or so, the person went back to check the jam, confirmed he had 200 and something. The creator. See, let me tell you, the attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. And the one you believe is the one that can work for you. All of the multifaceted attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. I believe every part of him. I believe everything that he can do. So, the attributes of God. The first is his creative ability. It gives us the basis to have hope in this life. Number two is God's restorative ability. His ability to restore. What does it mean to restore? To bring back to life that which is dead. To make perfect that which is imperfect and to bring back lost opportunities God is able to do that God is able to do that there is an attribute of God that can restore things so it gives us hope that even when our situations look hopeless when God steps in he can restore in Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 7 just write it just write it for time's sake. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7. Ezekiel said that he took me in the spirit of the Lord to a, a valley full of dry bones. Hallelujah. The prophet of God was taken to a valley. 
The Bible says there were very many and the bones were very dry. Meaning they had been there in a long time. And he says, son of man, can these bones live again? And the prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy. Speak to these bones. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, at the prophet's word, bones began to be joined to bones. I'd like you to say, God can restore. Say it, God can restore. God can bring back to life that which is dead in my life. God can make perfect that which is imperfect in my life. And God can restore lost opportunities in my life. Oh yes. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Arise. Everything that was lost can be restored. I like you to say hallelujah. In John chapter 11, the entire text is from verse 1 to 44. But the part that concerns us is 17 to 27 and 39 to 44. Don't project it because of time. It talks about the story of a man called Lazarus in a place called Bethany. The Bible tells us that Lazarus, one who was greatly beloved of Jesus Christ, Jesus loved him so much. A report got to Jesus and they said, Lazarus whom you love is sick. And Jesus said, don't worry. The sickness is not unto death. Meaning the situation would not be worse than it already is. And when the master speaks, you believe him. But then they returned. And Jesus told them, let's go to our brother Lazarus for he sleepeth. And they said, ah, if he sleepeth, it's good for him. And then he came directly. He said, our brother Lazarus is dead. Four days. And the restorer. He was on his way coming. And when Mary saw him, she was angry. She was grieved. And they said, Master, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. He said, but now I know that it's not late. And Jesus said, Lazarus, your brother will arise. There will be restoration. He said, I know. Lazarus, I know. You have already been speaking about the blessed hope. I know. And Jesus said, do you not know that I... I'm the resurrection. That means it's not an event. It's a personality. It can happen now for you. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he looked at a stone. Men had concluded. And he said, roll away the stone. Let's review that case. For 10 years, your father's promotion has been delayed. But he said, roll away the stone. You take a step of faith. Show me that you have hope by going to roll away the stone. I will roll it for you. Roll it. If you want me to visit that case, roll away the stone. And they rolled away the stone. And Jesus stood. And in chapter 35, the Bible says, and Jesus wept. He had so much compassion. And he said, Father, I thank you because you hear me always. And I don't say this because I'm doubting you, paraphrasing, but so that these people will know. And he echoed a voice, the resurrection and the life. He sent a signal that rattled Hades, the place of death, the dead people. And he said, Lazarus, you know why he mentioned Lazarus' name? If he just said, come forth, every dead person would have come to life. And so he mentioned the one he wanted to come. He sent a word and that word came, passed through the astral realm and went and the word like a meter and it saw the spirit of Lazarus and he said, the master calleth. That's how rapture will happen. The blast of the trumpet will rattle through the gates of the spirit and the doors of life will open. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, they saw a man coming out. And he said, take off those grave clothes. Oh, God can restore. Who asks you to close those chapters in your life? Am I speaking to you? Who asks you to close the chapters? There are people who do not even confront certain issues again because they have closed it. But tonight the Lord is saying, open it up. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I gave you a prophetic word, but it is November right now. Can that word still come to pass? Is there anything too hard for me to do? 
I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, I have learned from experience and I have learned in my life that all we need to do, listen, the manifestation of your miracle does not take time. It is the process of preparation that takes time. For about 12 years, Joseph was being trained. But in one night, he slept a prisoner and woke up a prime minister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In one night, Hadassah, Esther, for one year, she kept preparing. Listen, the fact that you are going through a period of pruning, a period of waiting does not mean God is not moving. If you think he's too slow, you will want to move faster than him and you will complicate your journey. Wait. In one night, God changed the story of a nation. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, even if he said by this time next year, it will be fair enough. But he said tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Someone is sitting here tonight. By tomorrow night, you will sit down with your hand on your head and you'll be saying, my Lord, I didn't know I was this close. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. That's the testimony of many people now. Listen, you are... You have come so close. You've been enduring for years. But now that you are about to break open the gates of destiny, many of us want to turn back. I want you to know that the restoration ability of God is still in force. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I almost can't go. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough, but couldn't see. Oh, listen, let me tell you something. I trust the Lord. Something happened to us, a very interesting story. I won't give you all the details. Happened to us at the airport when we were traveling. Some things came up. There were lots of complications, and it was going to affect our tickets and all of that. And, you know, we were a bit concerned because I think there was issue of overbooking and so on and so forth. And... We had to make sure that we arrived on time and all of that. And humanly speaking, humanly speaking, at a point, in fact, about 30 minutes, 30 minutes to the time that we eventually secured the tickets, there was, all hope was lost. They told us there's no room again. This and that and that has happened. So they, they were, there had to be changes and there was no human way. I called the guys and I said, guys, this is the situation we're in now. If things get bad, this and that and that, this is worse. Let's just prepare for the worst, but God is faithful. Let me tell you something. It did not take more than 10 minutes before they wrote all of the tickets. Is that true? We're the last to, to get into the flight. Hallelujah. They were standing, I'm not sure they were even aware. You see that? And they just, the tick, everything was in less than 10 minutes. God, when God is ready to stand up on your case, see, when you see God keep quiet, Papa Deboy preached a message, when God is silent, when God is silent, that's when you should start talking, praise him, give him room, give him space through your, your praise, and say, Lord, I don't know what you are doing, but I know you are doing something. Take the time to prepare the table, because it's going to be a large table. There are people who should come. Take the time. When God arises, he will scatter it. Let me tell you something. When it is your season of breakthrough, I don't care whether they say curses or yokes or X, Y, Z. God will stamp everything and open the door and say, let me see the man who will stop him. For someone, if you will just wait a little longer, this is the word of the Lord. The miracle will happen before you celebrate Christmas. Just wait a little longer. The mighty God is still alive. He told you and he's still faithful. Oh, we judge him faithful. It will still happen. It will still happen. Who is God speaking to? It will still happen. It will still happen. One of our brothers here, both him and, the, and his wife, the, the ladies in ushers and all of that. I remember when that brother met me. They are married now. They married early this year. I think around April. I remember when that brother met me. 
and the brother was, you know, he was sharing with me a bit of, about his marriage life and all of that. And I told him, I said, God will bless you and God will do a quick work. Brothers and sisters, within a short time, I was shocked. And if you see the pretty and godly lady, a combination of everything, within and without. Come on, ushers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whereas someone has been searching without the help of God for decades. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Let's sing it one more time. I searched all over. Come on. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. His ability to restore. God can restore the job of your father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God can restore it. He can restore it. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. God can restore every aspect of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, I will restore to you the years the canker worm has stolen. The palmer worm and the caterpillar, I will restore. It is within my power to restore. The second attribute of God. In 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's project it very quickly. 2 Kings chapter 6. I want us to hurry up because we'll pray. Wow. We must rush. From now, take up wings. We are going to rush. Hallelujah. 6 verse 1. And the sons of the prophets came to Elisha. Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Verse 2. Let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan. And take thence every man a beam. And let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, he said, go ye. In other words, let's increase space. Verse 3. And... And one said, be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servants. And so Elisha goes with them. Verse 4. So they went with them. He said, and as they came to Jordan, they were cutting down wood to make the place for their meeting. Five. But as one was felling the beam, what happened? The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, alas, master. It was borrowed. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I need help. I collected this to do the work of God, but it has landed me in trouble. Mm. Verse 6. And the man of God said, Come down. He said, Where did it fall? There is a God that can restore. Who is God speaking to? And he showed him the place. And he used an insignificant thing. Sorry. A stick that has no relevance and he threw it upon and the Bible says the iron from under started swimming until it came to the top verse 7 therefore he said take it up to you and he took his hand I prophesy to someone in the name that is above all names in a way and a manner you never expected to happen my God will show up for you before the end of this month in the name that is above all names i'm speaking to you there are things that you have lost and only god can give you i stand in under my office and in the name that is above all names i prophesy to you no matter where that axe is it is still in the river it didn't disappear it only left you in the name that is above all names we command that axe head to float please sit down Listen, look at me. 
the fact that you don't see a thing does not mean it has stopped existing it is there but it is not within your reach it is within the power of the master to call it from wherever it is i hope you understand how many of us can state um i think that's the first law of thermodynamics right what does it say huh energy can neither be what nor destroyed is that true that means the concept of disappearance is a mirage it only leaves your sight but it's somewhere there mm. the bones were scattered but when the master spoke they found themselves you would have thought it's over hear me let me tell you something armed robbers came to your house and they stole you do not see what they've carried but there are many kinds of it in the earth and when the master steps up as a restorer you will see things in dramatic ways come into your life and when God restores he does not give you what you lost he gives you what you lost and what you would have gained if you still had it that's what restoration is if God just gives you what you lost it's called progress not restoration until God gives you plus the balance on top He said, who has believed our report? The third attribute of God, very quickly, that gives us the basis for hope in this life is God's ability to bring acceleration. God's ability, his attribute as a God that can suspend time. He can move beyond time. Move beyond protocols. He can expedite the process of certain things. His ability to bring acceleration. In 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to 46. 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to 46. The Bible speaks to us about the prophet. Hallelujah. A great prophet of God. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Next verse. We read down to 46. And Ahab went to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Camel. Watch this. Ahab ate and drink, and he started running. He had started going, but Elijah seemed to be delayed. He was here sitting. Let's watch what happens. And he cast himself down upon the earth and prayed. 43. And all of that he told his servant go and check until seven times 44 all the time while those seven times were happening Ahab was already running he was already moving ahead the Bible says it came to pass that behold there arises a little cloud like a man's hand and he said go up and say to Ahab okay right here sorry I, I got it wrong this is the point where he told Ahab prepare your chariot get it down uh, that the rain stopped in us so now he started running verse 45 the Bible says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel so we see that Ahab had gone very far but the man of God was there no help 46 and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he gathered up his loins and ran on barefoot come on say speed a man on barefoot started running he said he ran before ahab and he caught up with him down to jezreel so it gives us hope that no matter what the delay is god can god can give speed to your feet and you will run and in one month you will do what has taken men 10 years 10 years brothers and sisters believe me it is possible when God quickened, he said he will make your feet like the hind's feet. His ability to bring acceleration. The Bible tells us how that when Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side, they entered the boat and they started going ahead of him. Is that true? And the Bible says he stayed to pray. They were six hours ahead of Jesus. Six hours ahead. But when he got up, he started walking 
and within a short time he caught up with them and he was about to overtake them they thought he was a ghost and he walked on water it doesn't have to be the normal process when God steps in he can break protocols are you hearing what I'm saying in John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 but our verse of emphasis is from verse 6 to 10 project verse 6 to 10 for us John chapter 2 from verse 6 to 10 the Bible tells us about a wedding in Cana and the Bible tells us they took out time to prepare that wedding it probably took them days to make wine but that wine finished they needed a miracle and something happened it says and there were there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three this and that and then verse 7 and Jesus said fill the water pots it does not have to undergo the process of fermentation there is a spiritual fermentation process that can happen come on now ah yes you don't need to wait until it produces all of those things are you getting what I'm saying no enzymes, no nothing, no ethanol, no nothing. No, no hydrocarbon, no nothing. A technology in the spirit. Fill the water pots with water. And they fill them up to the brim. Verse 8. And he said, draw it out and take it to the governor. Chemical reaction finished. Yield 100%. Are you getting my point? 100%. No waste. Nothing to throw away. No releasing of any CO2 or anything. No. Chemical process finished. Expedited time at once. And he said, draw it out and take it. Verse 9. And when the ruler of the feast tasted the wine. So on the way it became wine at once. And he knew not whence it was. He said, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Verse 10. And he said, every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse comes. In other words, people give their best at the first time. But he said, why have you kept the good wine until now? There is someone here within a short time. What you will do, men will think you took 10 years to do it. But that it happened within days. One of our brothers, Mukhtar, I think he did his whole, his whole project within a short time. Because they later cancelled the whole thing. And what he did within two days was greater than what he did in months. Everybody shout speed. Shout it again. Oh God will accelerate your life. Hallelujah. Finally before we pray, how do we activate hope? It must be activated. It doesn't just happen. Three keys and we'll rise up to pray. Activating hope. Principle number one. Total surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You want to activate hope in your life. Both blessed hope and hope in this life. It starts with surrendering to Jesus Christ. Total surrender gives you an eternal consolation. That in the end of all things, you will be with Jesus forever. I call it the master hope. The master hope. When you surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you have ultimately activated hope. Scriptural references. Romans 5 verse 2. Don't project. Romans 5 verse 2 and then 1 John 5 verse 13. Talks about us knowing that we have eternal life. So total surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. Number two. How do we activate hope? The power of testimonies. The power of testimonies. The power of testimonies. Psalm 66 verse 16. The power of testimonies. Psalm 66 verse 16. Declaring your testimony activates an assurance in the listeners. The Bible is full of testimonies that many have held on to and seen it reproduced in their lives. Testimonies can reproduce themselves in the lives of the listeners. So every time I testify of what God has done in my life, it activates hope. So someone who is about giving up just hears that God did this. And he says, if God did it, then I will still hold on. Hallelujah. Psalm 66 verse 16 says, come and hear 
all ye that fear the Lord, and I will declare what he had done for my soul. I will declare it. I will declare it. In Luke chapter 8 from verse 26 to 39. Just give us verse 39. Luke chapter 8 from verse 39. But the whole context is 26 to 39. The Bible speaks to us about the madman in Gadara. Hallelujah. The madman in Gadara. After he was healed, he was blessed. He wanted to go with Jesus and Jesus said, no, go. And the Bible says, return to your house. Jesus was telling him, go and testify. Return to your house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And the Bible says, and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. So he published testimonies are very powerful let me give you two more scriptures psalm 22 verse 22 and psalms 40 verse 9 psalms 22 verse 22 and psalms 40 verse 9 all these scriptures point to the fact that it is important for us to testify in fact the bible says it this way it says and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony your testimony is very important. There are many people here, God has done too many things for you, but nobody knows. Nobody knows about it. Hallelujah. When they say, submit your, your names and come and tell us what God has done. There are many of us here that have striking testimonies. Many of us come for counseling and God does remarkable things and we keep quiet. I tell you, we don't share one over 20 of the remarkable testimonies that happen in this house and through this ministry. In fact, there are more people who share testimonies outside of Koinonia than those who share testimonies here. When you share your testimony, you, you activate hope in the life of people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll never forget Steve Strings. I remember one time um, he gave a testimony. It was a miracle how he got admission in ABU. He got admission in the third list. The first list came out, his name was not there. The second list came out and his name was not there. But he had the testimony of someone who were in living faith that Sunday. And the testimony of somebody. And the person testified that he went around Senate seven times. Angry and saying, Lord, this is Jericho. It must fall. And when admission list came out, his name was there, Steve Strings said, that's it. Steve Strings went around seven times. That list came out, his name was there. Because of testimonies. Listen, many of you have taken the same steps some people took and you got the result, but you have kept quiet. Hallelujah. One of our school of ministry people, he, he came in, I think he should be around here, and he came, he, he sent me a text, a very humbling testimony. In fact, I told him to come over at the school of ministry tomorrow just to share with, with our current students to bless them what God has remarkably done in his life within a short time. God has done too many things for us. And if you will not give him the glory, you would stop seeing his hand in your life. He said, if you will not glorify me, I will raise up stones. Meaning, I will only raise up what will glorify me. Hallelujah. So, the power of testimonies. Number three, and this is where we wrap up tonight. The ministry of prophets of God. How do you activate hope? The ministry of true prophets of God. Not just prophets in office. But men and women of God who stand in prophetic dimensions. Listen to me. This is, this is very important. I want you to listen because we are about to pray. All through scripture, true prophets of God have been dispensers of hope and agents of change. Men have always been God's weapons that he will use to bring hope alive and to create changes in people. Hallelujah. Joseph was the prophet of God that was sent to Egypt to preserve them. Elijah was sent to a widow in Zarephath to preserve her and restore to her what the famine had taken. 
Elijah was also sent, um, Elisha was sent to the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. The Bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet. They were about to take her children and do trade by battle with them. And the woman ran to the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Do this and that and that. And the woman came out of the situation. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, the story of Naaman. The Bible says Naaman was the captain of the, of the Syrian army. He was a great man, but he was leprous. Hallelujah. And when they sent him with a letter, the prophet gave an instruction. Go and wash yourself seven times in Jordan. And that was it. The scripture we just shared in 2 Kings chapter 6. The restoration of the axe head by the instruction of a prophet of God. Listen to me. When a people lack a prophetic voice. When a people or a ministry or a, terror, a, a, a territory lack true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom will become their experience i'm saying this please get it i will repeat myself when a people when a ministry when a territory lacks true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom becomes their experience again and again and again i'm trying to look for a scripture that just came to my spirit ezekiel 22 verse 30 let's look at something that the prophet said ezekiel 22 verse 30 we're rounding up right now while they project that i'd like you to write ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7 we've read the scripture the value of dry bones it happened to the prophet of God. The prophet of God gave an instruction. Every time you are in need of hope, you are in need of change, among other principles you engage in is find a true prophet of God. He said, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. So I destroyed the land because there was no man. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. There must be a voice. Let me tell you something. In every territory and every, every society, there are prophetic agents that God plans strategically. They represent dispensers of hope. Men who God stamps their voice stamp their words hallelujah Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 the last verse Hosea chapter 12 the prophet told us something that has become an instruction in the body of Christ Hosea chapter 12 verse 13 he said and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt by what? a prophet now hold on it is true that god delivered the people but their hopes were shattered until a man showed up they never it is true that there was a prophecy that there will be deliverance for them but nothing happened until a man moses showed up the moment that prophet of god appeared hope was brought back to life when they saw him he gathered them and said people begin to prepare you are days away from this captivity and you'll be out and he went and challenged that 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 God called Pharaoh Bishop Oyedeko said prophets are territorial commanders his exact word now it may sound arrogant but it is not it's an election of grace when God calls a man and truly puts a true apostolic and prophetic man to, God makes it a point of duty to back you. When you speak in the name of the Lord, he said, I prophesied, but I did it as I was commanded. And he said, hear ye the word of the Lord, spoken to an envoy. 
He said, believe the Lord. And by a prophet, sorry, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he still preserved them. The ministry of true apostles and prophets of God in the earth has not ended. Contrary to the popular theology that people speak, it has not ended. There are still men and women, but you doubt their ministry to your detriment. The Bible says, believe the Lord and you shall be established. It says, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Doubt the Lord and refuse to be established. Doubt his prophets and suffer for the rest of your life. It's not idol worship. I know there is an imbalance where men have made themselves gods. But I can tell you, it is part of the program of God to use men to speak in the purposes and the counsel of God. When the prophet Simeon held on to Jesus Christ, he began to prophesy to him. There was a prophet as 84 years she had been in the temple waiting for the consolation of Israel. She carried Jesus Christ and spoke and she was ready to die. And Jesus walked and nothing could kill him until he gave his life by a prophet. He came. Isaiah prophesied unto us a child is born. By a prophet he came. By a prophet he was preserved. If Jesus Christ needed to subscribe to the true ministry of the prophetic be careful lest you allow the devil cheat you by putting a very doubtful heart and you keep looking and say are miracles really real do people really get healed is it true it's a big shame that when people are healed we associate it most of the time to witchcraft power so we agree that witches and wizards can heal and then we are saying the lord of glory cannot heal verse 18 oh, oh, oh. but the jews did not do what the jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind that's another thing so you either say the man of God is not a genuine man of God or the miracle that happened is not genuine. That's what they said. They said we don't believe that the man has been born blind and received his sight until they called his parents. So you can watch people SS genotype in your presence chain and you say there's no way I'm studying medicine or I'm a doctor. This thing cannot happen. Or you watch somebody holding a crutch get healed or somebody blind or deaf or someone oppressed liberated and you say just like that just like that what are you doing are you seeing two things can happen when your heart is not open to receive you can sit down and keep doubting this man of god is he using something if it's easy to get the something get it how many of you remember one gentleman called sadiq ibrahim I never knew it was so difficult to get power from the kingdom of darkness until that guy came he came to give some of you were around that miracle service this guy was a terrorist he was a terrorist he was part of the people that trained those who fought for post-election violence and he came was dying of hiv right dying of tuberculosis he had slept in the grave three days he said he could enter a church and look at a man of god and blow this whatever magic portion and the man of god will just get confused on the stage so he came for koinonia just like this and he was sitting outside hallelujah as soon as i came up on stage when he saw people falling he said there's power in this place whether there's witchcraft power or god's power there is power in this place because he knows what it means the kind he went to sleep in the grave for three days murdered little children and used their blood for sacrifice so that guns will not enter his body just for that little thing see the sacrifice you think it's easy to get power from satan get it hallelujah that guy was there he's on video as soon as i stepped on stage he said as soon as i came on stage all he saw was light and fire and that was the end of it he didn't even know when he collapsed then i called him by word of knowledge 
and i said he should come he's on video go and watch it right there he was healed of hiv he was healed of tuberculosis the results were there i mean some of you we then we used to meet also there he testified he gave his testimony it was verified it shocked him that was when he made up his mind they were still looking for him to kill him brothers and sisters the power of god exists miracles still happen i know that many of you believe but you have not received that reality that your situation can change tonight i believe god for somebody let's trust god together let's trust god together let's trust god together and say lord it can change it can change that genotype can change they refuse to allow you marry because you are ss that genotype can change that genotype can change you must not understand how everything can happen the bible says just as you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of how a child not the way of the wind that's how you do not know the work of god there are certain dimensions that are inexplainable hallelujah selena is here where is selena wave your hand i think it was her auntie that that one time we prayed for she had triplets right or something the children are still alive triplets one two three three children i just felt a need to clear this air because some of you come with all kinds of cynical spirits and you have problems that are killing you but rather than opening your heart you are there just wondering is god really the one doing this can somebody just fall down like that without being touched is it really true is it real it's not your fault it's the way some of us were raised you don't have to be angry listen listen when you ever hear a man criticizing a man of god don't blame the person never insult the person they are only talking that while we were insulting jesus christ on the cross what did he do he said father forgive them forgive them never find yourself trying to defend yourself no no it's not part of your ministry the psalmist said in psalm 3 thou O lord art a shield for me he says you are my glory and the lifter up of my head i always tell people gamaliel spoke beautifully he said if it is of god no man can stop it if it is not of god it will fail there's no one beside you I lead the earth to worship you. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. I lead the earth to worship you. I lead the earth to worship you. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, change our situation tonight. There are many of us as you're sitting looking at me right now. The problem that you have is only God that can help you because the load is too much. Are you getting me? There are some of you, it's like I see you in the hospital. Your situation right now is a matter of life and death your own is just it's not just admission maybe there is a terminal disease i remember a particular lady i was talking to i think she might be somewhere here a herbalist predicted her death today today this 25th the herbalist predicted that is today that she would die so when i got to hear about it i said interesting come and die here hallelujah just come and die here <laughs> there is a rod of a higher priesthood there is a rod of a higher priesthood is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am that's what god is asking somebody tonight is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am Lord 
talking to you. Is there anything to what for me to do? I am that I am. For the last time now, prophesy. Is there Rise up on your feet and begin to prophesy. I believe you. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Everywhere. Inside and outside. Connect. This is the moment of faith. I'm about to step back. And let this most Holy Spirit step into your life is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything for me to do I am that I am Come on, celebrate the God of miracles oh, oh, oh. Hey, hey. Is there anything You want for me to do Too hard for me to do I am that I am I am that I am hey. Is there anything Is there anything So hard for you Too hard for him to do. I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for him to do? I am that I am. Lift your hands, everybody, and let us worship you. Emmanuel, 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 your name is called Emmanuel, your name is called. Come on, call his name. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Your name is God. Emmanuel. Your name is God. Your name is God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His name is God. Emmanuel. His name is called. Listen. The Bible says, listen. It says, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things. What is not possible with God involve God. And it becomes possible that sickness will never go but with God that sickness suddenly leaves 
that situation will never change but with God that's why we are singing that song Emmanuel Emmanuel Hiya. Emmanuel 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 His name is called Your name is called Emmanuel Emmanuel Hallelujah Before I minister I begin ministering Hallelujah. There are two people that God is going to visit in a very strong way. Hallelujah. Both of them are outside. Hallelujah. The power of God will come mightily upon them. I don't know what it is that God wants to do. Those outside, just lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. I see the angels of the Lord walking outside. Two people. The power of God is coming mightily right now as I speak upon them. Please let me have them inside. Two people mightily. It's a strong spirit of prophecy in this place. Two people very mightily by the power of the Holy Ghost. His name is called... Emmanuel His name is God Emmanuel Hallelujah Those of you in this row just lift your hands I don't know what it is that I see the angels of the Lord doing here I see the angels of the Lord moving At the count of three there will be such a move of the spirit in this room. Let me have the people outside. Thank you, Jesus. One, two, three. Let the power of God move right now. Right now. Is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Emmanuel, his name is called. Emmanuel, his name is called. Emmanuel, his name is Call Emmanuel, his name is called Bring her, no devil will stop her. Your name is called. Your name is God. 
presence of God no demon no devil no altar I don't care what altar of darkness my altar is calling you oh God my altar is calling you oh God my secret place is calling you, oh God. My worship is calling you, oh God. My worship is calling you, oh God. Take my praise. Please lift your hands. I see the angels of the Lord moving now. Lift your hands. We're about to cause devils and wicked spirits. Please follow me, instrumentalist. We are going to cause every power. The Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father, that tree must give way. And I come under an apostolic anointing in the name of the one whose i am and whom i serve that at the count of three any power that is not of god inside and outside at the count of three we challenge those devils by the fire of the holy ghost as you shout three the power of god will rush inside and outside and there will be massive deliverances right now are you ready now one two Three shout Jesus. Shake up a pack of process. I cause powers. Every wicked power. Every demon. Every activity of darkness. I cause you now. 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 Every act of witchcraft. Shake it. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. You come under the judgment of God inside and outside right now. Let the power of God bring deliverance for upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Hallelujah. Those outside, just those outside, goodness. I see a number of angels. You're going to shout Jesus after the count of three. Outside means everywhere that is not in. And there will be massive 
deliverance thank you jesus are you ready now those outside i see the power of god like files of fire one two at the count of three shout jesus three we dethrone altars we dethrone yokes of darkness hallelujah hallelujah blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God those outside be sensitive there is so much power I don't know what it is but the, the power of God is so strong outside in the name of our God hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus name of our God bring the lady most high most high you're the Lord most high leave this girl in peace now go now let her go don't waste our time let her go now I set you free now out of her now that devil of darkness blessed is he who comes in the name of God hallelujah please help her ladies it's not easy I know just find it's time for her deliverance. Bring her. Come. Don't force her. She will come. Now. Quickly. I call you Lord. Most high. Don't touch her. She will come by herself. let her go now in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost out of her now in the name of Jesus Christ let her go now thank you Jesus I bring you liberty be free now in Jesus name she's free In the name of Jesus it's over let her go now the blood of Jesus the name of Jesus Christ thank you you died for her let her go I come with the rod of a higher priest who let her go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ thank you father I give you all the praise she's delivered completely in the name of Jesus Christ thank you
I anoint you guys. Let the anointing of the Spirit flow through you as you minister to them. In the name of Jesus. She will go. Come, lay hands on this lady. Out of her now, thou devil of darkness. I cost you. I see you in the spirit. Out! Out! Let her go free. Her time of deliverance is now. I speak to you, wicked spirit. Let her go now. Jesus died. Listen, let me tell you. There is no power. Listen. There is no power that will resist the power of God tonight. The Bible says, let every soul be subject to the higher powers. Have you read that in your Bible? Let every soul be subject. When it sees powers that are higher than it, it should be subject. Let every soul. Hallelujah. Esther. 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 There is an Esther that is not feeling fine. You are sick. Not just, I know there are many Esthers. The Lord is ministering to me. I don't know what is wrong with that Esther, but you need a miracle, a healing miracle. Esther, please let's save time. There is a lot we have to do tonight. Esther. Who is Deborah? Deborah. Deborah, you are outside. That Deborah is wearing red. You are wearing red. Red with black spots. It's a shirt, red with black spots. Deborah, come. Your name is Deborah. I'm hearing the name Queen. Queen is, I think that's supposed to be a name. Queen. Who is queen? Queen. Queen. You are Esther. Come, come on. While you hold them, look guys, speak to them and let them. You will waste your time with demon spirits have a way of wasting people's time. Don't. You will save yourself a lot of energy. It makes no difference who is speaking. Queen. Who is queen, you are queen. I need to pray for you. You have a blood condition. Victoria, 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 Victoria. I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Gabriel, who is Gabriel? Gabriel, please just save time when I mention your case. Gabriel. Gabriel is outside. Outside. The Lord is ministering to me. Outside. Gabriel, you are. Is it outside? Yes. Gabriel is outside. You are Gabriel. You are outside. Hallelujah. Come, my dear. What is wrong with you? I need to pray for you. Because the Lord is ministering to me. I saw this lady. And I saw something that looks like a lizard. And is sucking her blood physically. Look, come, come up. Look at this girl. Look at her. You will know that this girl doesn't look healthy. You don't even know what. And the Lord just opened my eyes and I saw something like a lizard. Just leased to her heart region. And it's just sucking her blood. This is how somebody just gets up and just dies. What happens to you? Your chest region that devil is a liar you'll be free hallelujah there's no time to minister to your individual needs are you following me now if god gives me a word for you i'll just pray otherwise 
Ah, okay. come, 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 come. You must be set free now. Hold my hands. Out! Come out of her now. Out now. Blessed is he who comes. I set you free from this captivity. Be free now. Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray for you. Who is having serious abdominal pain? You're having pain, just your stomach region here, very seriously. One of you here, because I'm feeling that same pain, so I know. You? Let me pray for you. But, but that's, that's not really the major thing wrong with you. What's wrong with you? bring you the power that is in the name of Jesus. Lay your hands on your stomach. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for all of these people. As I lay hands on you, it doesn't matter what the situation is. In the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk into the blessings and the promises of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be set free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be set free in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, the Lord is showing me about three people. There's a severe skin infection that is you have done all you. It's a very serious thing. In fact, it's even embarrassing. It's even embarrassing. There are three people. This is one. There's there's, there's two more. Please quickly. It's a serious thing. You have you have prayed about it. You have used drugs. Nothing has gone. Please. I'm seeing three people. It's time for God to set you free. Don't worry. If there are still more people you can connect. I'm just telling you the one that God is showing you. I don't care what it is. We sang that God will set you free. Please don't come out here to try God. It will leave. I don't care what it is. hallelujah thank you jesus please those with peptic ulcers just get ready all kinds of ulcers we're going to pray for you now please make sure it's, it's only skin infection only skin infection hold my hands madam i set you free in the name of jesus be free now be free now in the name of jesus be free now in the name of jesus as i pray for you just go back to your seat oh, the power of god is strong on my hands be free now in the name of Jesus, I cause that spirit to be free now. In the name of Jesus, let him go. I set you free. Be free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause skin infection in the name that is above all names. Hold my hands. Look at me. Look at me. I'm seeing you tied. Not only are you I pray that God will visit you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let her go free in the name of Jesus. Let her go free right now in the name of Jesus. You're suffering from any kind of ulcer, any kind of ulcer. We're just flowing as the Holy Ghost is, is ministering right now. There is a lot to be done. So please, ulcers, ulcers, God is ministering to me. visit your people oh god these are the ones that you died for look how many people are inflicted by ulcers i'll pray for you very quickly please i want you to believe as i lay my hands on on you the power of God will come upon you and you'll be free. Just begin to breathe in. Some of you will feel because the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing it. You will feel something leave you. Just come out of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Be free now. Out! Come out of her! Now! In the name of Jesus. 
out out of her thank you Jesus Christ be free right now out out please as I pray for you check yourself he's able out come out I will pray for you and I will talk to you in the name of Jesus Christ I set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost I set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ I set you free be free now in the name of Jesus Christ be free in the name of Jesus Christ Able. Bring the lady shout in there. Hey, hey, hey. Say he's able. Let her go in the name of Jesus. I set you free by the power of the highest. Say God he's able. able. God is able. God. Command that spirit of infirmity. Leave her right now. Never to return. Be free now. In Jesus' name. Complete freedom. showing me someone you came here i'm seeing someone in your family lying down on the bed it's like a terminal disease that's one of the major reasons why you came here the lord is showing me is a woman i think your mother someone's mother lying down on the bed who is that person i'm seeing someone on the bed and it's a very serious situation please who is that let's save time we have to really really be fast there's a lot to do who is that person please if you are the one just find your way quickly so i can pray with you Who went to Shika and came back? Shika and came back. Because this person I'm seeing, they took the person to Shika and brought the person back. You? My mother has one being in Shika. She went to Shika. What are you coming out for? Why is the man insisting that is the one? What is it? You came from Shika. You are coming from Shika. What's wrong with you? This one is a woman who is not you, but anyway, what's his situation? But it's a, no, no, no. What, what? Just straight to the point. What happened? My body is very hot, and um, the head is turning me like move. Oh, I want to fall. This is the spirit of death now. You would have died before today. Hold my hands. I want to pray with you. You'll be free now. Thank you, Jesus. I set you free. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
What couldn't you do before? Ogasa, what couldn't you do before? What couldn't you do before? What, what is it that you could not do before? Okay, come, climb. Let's see if you feel weak again. I'll pray for you. Just, just walk. Let me see. Try to jump. Any weakness? Don't worry now. If you want to jump, you'll fall. Shabi, I've prayed for you. Fall and die here. Jump. <laughs> Any weakness? Any weakness in your body? Try it again. Try it again. Look at, this is somebody that came. He said he went to Shika. Huh? Are you sure? Don't pretend though. Are you feeling fine? You are completely fine. You are here because I saw the spirit of death. Your own is not just sickness. Lord, it is perfected in the name of Jesus. Please take on your shoes. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me somebody with a condition. Is this my left or right leg? This is left. My left leg. I don't know if it's a, if it's a bone condition or a pain that you have in there. Please, who is that person? The Lord wants to heal you right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. You're the one? Oh, you can see it. You can even see it. What's the problem? I actually played football. On that. You're a footballer? I had a fracture for eight months. You have a fracture? Now, on the leg, there is a fracture. Is it true? Please make sure you tell us the truth when you come here. Look at me. Watch yourself get healed now. Come. Don't close your eyes. Open your eyes. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hiya. The Holy Spirit. Young Gicho wrote a book. He said, The Holy Spirit, my senior partner. Watch what happens to this guy now. My brother, look at me. You are an adult, so you will not tell lies. Right? Watch. I don't want you to miss your miracle. Where is the fracture? Exactly. All right. Watch what happens to you now. Lay your own hands there. The hands you'll be using every day. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. You sense what is happening to you right now. Are you seeing this? Look at what is happening to him. You see the power of God? You see the power of God on him? He's laying hands on himself oh, and he cannot even stand again. That's the end of it. Stand up. Stand up. Jump. Do what you couldn't do. Just do it. Test yourself. Look at this. Look at See the guy is even rejoicing. <laughs> this is somebody with a fracture, fracture on his leg. Come on, give Jesus praise for an onion. See, there's no, there's no pain. Try doing like this. Do like this. That's how you know whether there was pain or not. Look at, look at, look at what you do. Come on, give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. It never returns. Leg. Come, 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 don't worry. What's the situation? Yeah, pain. pain there. Let me see. Just just the no 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 you don't need to lift your just that point. The joint there. How long? Since two weeks now. Two weeks. What happened? Just like that. You woke up and the pain refused to go. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Which one do you want? You want to lay hands on yourself or I should just pray? <laughs> huh? Alright, but seriously, let's pray. Hold my hands. Heal her, Lord. Set her free right now. The power of God is coming upon you, that leg. In the name of Jesus Christ. No pain. See, that's the power of God coming upon your leg. Check yourself. Check. Honestly. Check yourself. Look at it. The power of God is moving strongly. Check. Check. Do you feel any pain? You feel any? No pain is. She's even surprised. No pain is. Give Jesus praise. That devil has gone never to return again. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goodness. The Lord just showed me a mighty miracle that has happened now. Someone you have a hole, you used to have a hole in your teeth. Check it now. You will not see that hole there. Please check it and come out. This is a miracle that has just happened now. Please, I'm going to start praying in mass for people. But you will be very surprised. When, when that happens to you, just come out quickly. The Lord, once God shows me something, he has done it. Please check yourself. 
check yourself we are not faking this thing here make sure you check yourself you will be very surprised to find out that there used to be a hole and that hole is closed hallelujah let me pray for you your mother your mother let me pray for you father in the name of jesus let there be healing for your mother wherever she is let there be healing for your mother in the name of jesus why did you come out for your mother hold my hands father for mommy we pray let there be healing and perfection in the name of the lord jesus christ please make sure you only come out for the cases i call why is he out eh? okay let me pray for you father for the mother we agree right now let there be freedom in the name of jesus look at this look at the miracle your teeth is closed now come come please we need a witness we need a witness is it true don't tell lies here you're in the presence of god where is it sorry can you open your mouth for me to see i'm sorry i'm sorry i hope that's not let me see you used to have a hole please come whether come and check no let's have any independent person so that you don't say we're acting this thing now come come and check check if there is any hole are you are you seeing that there's no it was really paining me when i it was paining you when you came here the hole has been there who knows about it only your sister knows about it and it's and you've been healed any pain now thank you jesus we give you all the praise in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord now please stand up everybody i want to pray for eye conditions now let's just flow the way god is Please, if you have any problem with your eye, just lay your hands. There will be healing miracles right now. There will be healing miracles right now with the eyes. Immediately, I pray for you. Some of you, the power of God will touch your eyes. Just check yourself. And when you find out that there is a miracle, I want to take a few testimonies there. Please lift your, lift one hand and place one hand on your eyes. Jesus will give you the praise. Hallelujah right now in the name of jesus christ i rebuke every kind of eye problem in the name of jesus i cause cataract in the name of jesus glaucoma i cost you now in the name of jesus short-sightedness long-sightedness be healed right now in the name of jesus by the power of the holy ghost i command to be healed and every spirit of blindness every spirit of infirmity every kind of blindness whether in one eye whether in both eyes i rebuke you right now i command be healed in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus now check yourself please check yourself check yourself god is doing great miracles check yourself check yourself check yourself hallelujah while they are doing that the lord is showing me people with heart conditions heart conditions you have a heart condition whether a hole in your heart or any kind of heart condition please can i have those people heart condition you've been diagnosed medically to have a heart condition you have a heart problem who preparing to go to india for is preparing to go to india for surgery what of you yes sir. what of you 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 have a heart problem since when did you know about it february the doctors told you what did they say is wrong palpitation palpitation oh doctor doctor where's that doctor in ushers you are the one self oh yeah Augusta, what does that mean doctor tell us Huh? Say she has palpitations. Abnormal beating of the heart. Ah, okay. Loud and you can hear it even when she. Is. So it's a you stethoscope, you can hear it. So it's a serious situation. She will be healed now. You're a doctor now. Wait, you go to hospital tomorrow. But for now, my dear, do you believe Jesus will heal you completely? Lay one hand on your chest. Lord, let her be healed right now. The power of God is flowing through you. Just breathe in and out. 
thank you Jesus Christ be healed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost be set free please check yourself Lord have mercy on the Father in the name of Jesus how do you know now try it breathe in and out let's see thank you Jesus Christ let there be perfection in the name of Jesus let there be perfection the devil wants to bring stroke as I just held you huh is that true you're already feeling half of you some okay your dad too of stroke because immediately I had I held your hand I just saw stroke father we rebuke that stroke in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost be healed right now we are going to rebuke delay in marriage now rise up on your feet the devil is a liar please rise up on your feet some of you are smiling that means it doesn't concern you because those who it really concerns is a serious issue praise God hallelujah now I'm going to pray for you please follow me guys hallelujah most marital delays are demonic in nature and we're going to arrest it right now you can stand in for yourself you can stand in for your loved ones please lift your hands everybody you'll be amazed at what will happen right now everyone please lift your hands you can stand for yourself you can connect hallelujah at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus father i pray that as they shout that name every every demonic force that has held anyone's marital destiny goodness i sense the power of god in the name that is above all names father i pray that as your people shout that name i tell you many of you the power of god will rush like fire on you in the name of jesus every wicked manifestation of spirit husband or wife any spirit entity that cleaves itself to anybody as you shout that name by the power of the holy ghost their activities end now one two three i cast those spirits in the name of jesus let god's people go in the name of jesus out of them now by the power of the holy ghost inside and outside i command those powers to let you go now release their marital destinies now release their marital destinies now every cause that stops marriage in families in the name of the lord jesus i arrest it i arrest it by the power of the holy ghost we are still going to shout that name over this case the lord is not done yet lift your hands again i want you to shout it at the top of your voice and as you shout that name the fire of the holy ghost will hit you like a tornado god is visiting situations right now thank you jesus one shake it up two get ready now get ready with your hands lifted three be released now be released now be released now i command chains chains marital chains be broken by the power of the holy ghost i command chains be broken in the name of Jesus be broken in the name of Jesus be broken let marital doors open in the name of Jesus 
I prophesy over your marital destiny in the name that is above all names. The Bible says, seek out of the book and read. It said, none of this shall fail. None shall want her mate. Ladies, wherever your husband is, in the name that is above all names, I call him into your life. I call him into your life. Listen. Not a man, your husband. Not a man, your husband. May he come into your life in the name of Jesus. And I prophesy over our brothers in the name that is above all names. That sister that God has destined for you, we release her into your life now 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 hallelujah now i'm going to pray for all sick people especially those who have come from everywhere while you come out do you have your prayer request please if you don't have it it's time to begin to write it now for all those who are sick you are sick in your body you came specifically for healing it's your time now please come out please come out come out just come and stand here everyone sick everyone sick inside and outside just find your way and line up here ushers just arrange them quickly stand here believing that god will set you free He that comes unto God must come believing. I want you to expect the power of God to come mightily upon your life. Whatever the situation is. I'm going to lay hands on every one of you and as I lay that hands upon you hallelujah I want you to expect the power of God to flow into your life whatever the situation is hallelujah worship team lead us in a powerful moment of worship hallelujah Lord we give you the praise thank you for healing in the name of Jesus those of you who are sitting please write your prayer requests once you are done just begin to pray in tongues and then we'll do this very quickly My God is awesome. In the name of Jesus Christ. Heal now. Heal now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hide me from the rain. I cause everything that is not of God. My God. Out. My God is awesome. Heal now. When I'm broken. Praise me. My God is he, he can move in the name of Jesus. Strength for you. I cause sickness. I want you to believe that God is setting you free. My God. Heal. In the name of Jesus. Be healed, mommy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Out of her now. Protect the 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All those trusting God for a job, please stand up. Please, I want you to believe. I want you to believe. Hallelujah. I want you to believe as I pray for you. I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit leads me. There are people who came here tonight and your, true, your sincere desire is that God will visit you. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Promotion neither comes from the east nor the west. In the name that is above all names. I pray. May the Lord give you a miracle job in the name of Jesus. I speak it and I prophesy it. May my God give you a miracle job in the name of Jesus. As you are lifting up that hand, let an anointing come upon that hand. Keep it lifted, please. That hand that is lifted, I pray. Let an anointing come upon it. The oil of gladness that sets you above your equals. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you have submitted your CV, I pray. May my God cause them to visit you in the name of Jesus. And every power that is stopping your job, in the name that is above all names, the four horns that lift up themselves against Judah, against Jerusalem, against Israel. I command right now, let those doors of jobs be opened supernaturally. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please everybody stand. Submit your prayer request. Do we have it? This is a very prophetic moment. We have a few minutes, but this is where everybody gets to receive. Please. I want you to be very, very sensitive. If you've not submitted your prayer request, please just do that quickly. This, this, just dedicate yourself to these few moments because they are very very prophetic what we're about to do any more people please quickly we have a God that answers prayers here so ta 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 bala da 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 ba Zekete brege de bela de bos. Zige de brege de brege de bala da da bos. Shada ke de bala da mas. Hallelujah. This is the second time God is giving me this instruction. Usually we just pray on it, and once we are done here. But this is the second time the Lord is telling me that I should take this request with me, and I should pray over them through the night. There is a God that answers prayers. And Hezekiah took the threat letter to God before the altar. He said, Lord, behold their threatenings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to pray. Hallelujah. These requests represent impossible situations for some hallelujah situations that only the power of god can change there are some situations here if we have to read it even we the men of god will be discouraged because of the kind of request that's why we don't bother reading it we just drop it to the one who created the heavens and the earth i want you to know that within these few minutes i want you to pray from the depths of your heart and those following us online 
now is the time for them to connect hallelujah because as we pray over these requests the power of god will turn these requests into testimonies in the name of the lord jesus we're going to pray pastor alpha come femi come benga come just pray lay hands on this and prophesy stretch your hands everybody towards this request and begin to pray begin to pray and prophesy hallelujah zekata baba baba kata praga de baladarash zekate prondo koso praga de baladarash sete pro shapara da baladarara zekate baladarabos everybody stretch your hands and begin to declare and say lord whatever i wrote here is turned into a testimony Lord in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit change this situation change this situation in the name of Jesus we turn this to testimony Jesus Lord under this corporate anointing we release answers to this request we release answers to this request let them receive emergency attention of heaven now in the name of Jesus we release answers now in the name of Jesus thank you because we got nothing shall be impossible and thank you for the release of the harvest of the seed in Jesus name we pray hallelujah please everybody stand those who are visiting with us all those who are who came from outside Zaria please come out I'll minister to you now I want you to come out expecting the Lord there are so many people who have come from different places please just come out sit up I'll pray for them and I'm going to pray for everyone for a release of fresh fire and fresh unction hallelujah it's not enough to come and watch miracles hallelujah but you are going to pray that you carry this anointing hallelujah and you represent the kingdom thank you so much for those who came lizzie and her friends thank you so much all the way from abuja thank you pastor alpha all the way from kogi state eddie from joss Lunging from Abuja, I see a number of people. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to believe. I don't know what you came here for, but I really want you to believe by the power of the Holy Ghost. I want you to believe. I'm going to minister to you. Two things will happen to you. Whatever situation you came here trusting God for, I'm going to release my faith with you. And secondly, that you will carry an anointing. I tell you, something will come heavy upon your life. You will carry an anointing. You will carry an anointing. You will carry an anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Just clash the cymbals. Please play strings. Strings, strings, strings. In the name of Jesus. Anoint them in the name of Jesus. Be blessed. Take an anointing back. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Be healed, be blessed. Take this anointing back. Take this anointing in the name of Jesus. Awesome is your name. Walk in greater levels of power. Greater levels of power. In the name of Jesus. You do glorious things. 
Take an anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Break through every closed door. I open it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. You do glorious things. Take this anointing with you in the name of Jesus to your locality. Do mighty things for the King. I release your marital destiny. This is what the Lord is ministering. I release your marital destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Take this anointing. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I open every closed door. In the name of Jesus, I open every closed door. Let the fragrance of the Spirit be upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command breakthrough. I hear my spirit breakthrough. I release breakthrough. Breakthrough by the power of the Holy Ghost. I command breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I command breakthrough. 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 Financial breakthrough. God is bringing you financial breakthrough by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the world grow in the name of Jesus. Let the world grow. Let an anointing Closed door that I see in the name of Jesus. I open this closed door that I see by the power of the Holy Ghost. Take this anointing that it makes you mighty. Supernatural breakthrough by the power of the Holy Ghost. I cause that spirit that limits you. I cause that spirit in the name of Jesus. Please, everybody, stand up. The time is against us. Please, everybody, rise. I want to do an impartation right now and then I'll just prophesy on our lives. Please lift your hands. Something will come upon your life. Hallelujah. This is where certain people will receive something. I want to impart the gifts of the Spirit. I already sense a strong atmosphere. Lift your hands in the name of the Lord Jesus. The healing anointing is going to come on many people now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. The healing anointing inside and outside. Take it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
Take it now. Take it now. Go and heal the sick. Go and heal the sick. You will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. You will cast out devils. Shake it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. I pray. I command the prophetic. Let it be activated now. Prophetic fountains be open now. Visions, dreams. I command in the name of Jesus. Receive it. An unction. You don't need to bring them out. You don't need to bring them out. We activate it. Take it now. Supernatural experiences, dreams, visions. I command leadership mantles. Leadership mantles. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Strong leadership mantles. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray the nine gifts of the Spirit and many more listed in the Bible in the name of the Lord Jesus at the count of three different gifts will be activated in people right now one two three receive it word of knowledge word of wisdom prophecy tongues interpretation of tongues take it now I activate the full power of the spirit i activate it inside and outside take it let the holy ghost come upon you in power receive it receive it gifts of healing word of knowledge gifts of prophecy it will come like fire it will come like fire it will burn you it will come like fire it's the fire of the holy ghost the fire of the holy ghost two of you hold your hands hold your hand take it now take it now take it i activate the gifts of the spirit every apostolic ministry in this place take the fire take the fire take the fire every apostolic ministry take the fire every prophetic ministry take the fire take the fire take the fire hallelujah there are many of you who are kingdom financiers financial apostles everyone will be blessed but there are specific people lift your hands my god i pray that these people let an unction my god my god my god my god take it financial dominion by the power help them help them help them take it ideas i activate it by the power of the holy ghost financial apostles arise arise take the kingdom Set 
Now I want to prophesy very quickly. Please, I want you to shout Amen. Every closed door over your life, in the name that is above all names, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Every closed door, be open now. 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 I pray right now. Every opportunity you have lost, I don't care what it is. I prophesy right now. Receive restoration. Receive restoration by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive restoration now. Receive restoration now. Hallelujah. Every family under captivity and hardship in the name that is above all names, I command those families to be free now. Be free now. Free from hardship. Free from hardship. The Bible says to appoint unto them that morn in Zion. I pray whatever made you cry this month in the name that is above all names, I cause it to its root now. I cause it to its root now. I cause it to its root now. I pray everyone who has the key to the next level of your life every destiny helper i don't care where they are right now in the name of jesus like prophet ezekiel i call them he said i prophesied as i was commanded destiny helpers arise come forth destiny helpers arise come forth destiny helpers arise arise hallelujah wherever you have faced resistance in your life may this favor anointing in the name that is above all names as i prophesy right now let that favor anointing hit you like a tornado go back to where they rejected you and watch my god make a way for you i command favor i command favor in the name of jesus whatever has been speaking against your life and your destiny let the blood speak for you now let the blood speak for you now any terminal disease here any terminal disease here we terminate it once and for all in the name of Jesus every dying destiny every dying destiny like the bones in the book of Ezekiel hear ye the word of the Lord whatever you have that is dying whether it's your business whether it's your family whether it's your relationship whether it's your marriage I come with a prophetic voice hear ye the word of the Lord come alive now Come alive now. Come alive now. Come alive now. I prophesy that by the next miracle service, you will return with a change of garment that everyone that sees you will know that my God has visited you. Every ministry, every fellowship, every group every church every assembly represented here 
I pray, let an unusual unction rest upon your ministry. Everything you see happening here, go and reproduce it in the name of Jesus. I release upon you that power in the name that is above all names. Whatever has stopped your church from growing, whatever has stopped your ministry from growing, I command ministry grow, church grow in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you the praise. I'm going to make an altar call right now. If you're here and you've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus, please listen. This is a very serious moment. We're out of time. You've never made Jesus Lord of your life. Inside and outside, you probably were invited. You may have been a Christian, but you've never truly declared the Lordship of Christ. I'm going to invite you to come here. Or you've been born again and you found yourself derailing. This is the greatest miracle. Please, everybody rise. Just one minute, just to encourage those who are coming out. Please, let's rise. Right now, you belong to that category. You are saying, Lord, I return to you. I don't care whether you've been born again before. Please, I want you to leave your seat and come out right now. Leave your seat and come out right now. You want to make a decision. You are making a decision for the Lord Jesus for the first time. Please listen. Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself backsliding. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first person. Please appreciate them. I believe there are people. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They are coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. Inside and outside. Thank you for the courage. We salute your courage. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. It's a new day. It's a new season. You are saying goodbye to yesterday. And God gives you the gift of tomorrow to remedy for the mistakes of yesterday. Thank you, Jesus, for these ones. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you no matter how far. Keep coming. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of anybody. It's a personal affair tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I salute your courage for those of you who took out the time to come. Lift your right hands and from the depths of your heart, you're not reciting a poem. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe in you. I believe you died for me. I believe you shed your blood to set me free. I receive that freedom tonight and I receive eternal life into my spirit in the name of Jesus from today I declare that I'm born again I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me I make up my mind to live for Jesus all the days of my life forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ thank you so much for making that decision let me pray for you father preserve these ones you brought them out by your power preserve them in the name of the lord jesus may your christian experience be authentic in the name of the lord jesus thank you so much for making this decision where are they following okay you have a gentleman just lead you that gentleman waving his hands please just follow them they'll have your details and you'll be back to your seat celebrate jesus hallelujah Please, all those worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time attending any of our meetings we love you we celebrate you please rise up on your feet and just come out here koinonia celebrate them all who have come from far and near this is your first time you are very very welcome celebrate them appreciate them thank you for coming thank you for coming thank you for coming thank you for coming we celebrate you we honor you no matter how far come there is a blessing for you there is a prayer for you the Lord brought you here to bless you. Thank you so much. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing these ones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. All of you who took out the time to come. We really celebrate you. We appreciate you. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. Ministry put to, uh, program put together by Eternity Network International. Thank you so much for coming. We are here every Friday.
not this exact venue but every friday as god grants you the grace you will always be a blessing having you around praise the lord we have a blessing in the house and this is the gift we release to everyone who comes and i want the saints of god to stretch their hands and just bless you i want you to receive it please bless them professor you have a blessing upon your lips i want you to speak it we bless you let the hand of god be strong upon your life in the name of jesus we bless you with hunger for the things of the spirit we bless you with passion for god in the name of jesus we bless you with advancement we bless you with favor we bless you with speed in the name of jesus may you experience the power of god strong in your life we bless your finances let the heavens be open over your life in the name of jesus thank you again for coming we love you and we celebrate you now we just like you to follow the ushers that gentleman waving his hands and they welcome you more warmly on our behalf Koinonia celebrate hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin